Fourth, Benedictine spirituality is an ecumenical spirituality centered in hospitality. I suspect that it's the spirituality of prayer and liturgy as it's expressed primarily in the Opus Dei and in Lexio Divina, centered in the scriptures, that explains why Benedictine spirituality is and remains ecumenical and why several monasteries count among its oblates members of laity and clergy from several different Christian traditions. What could be more ecumenical or more ecumenically appealing and inviting than in the singing, proclamation of, and meditation on the scriptures on a regular daily basis? In fact, this is not by accident. Sister Mary Collins of the Order of St. Benedict reflected in 2004 on the fruits of that orientation, writing that, and I quote, Recent popes have given Benedictines and other monastic orders a special mission in the church. At the turn of the 20th century, certain monasteries in Europe were asked to be places of ecumenical hospitality. It was believed that Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox Christians who welcomed one another as brothers and sisters in Christ might overcome the centuries-old estrangements within the churches of East and West. It was hoped that committed believers who came to know one another and to pray together might grow in unity. They would also experience both the possibility and the difficulties of true reconciliation. These early initiatives help prepare the way for today's greater mutual understanding among all Christians who are baptized into the one body of Christ. Now we see that Benedict had long ago prepared the way for such 20th century monastic dialogue. He taught that all guests were to be received as Christ's and that strangers who visited the monastery might well be messengers of God." End quote. It is precisely from and within these sorts of monastic encounters in Benedictine homes all over the world that ecumenism grew and developed. Again, one thinks here of the great center for ecumenical and cultural research pioneered at St. John's Abbey in Minnesota. And not surprisingly, one of the most popular commentaries on the rule of St. Benedict today was written by an Anglican, Esther de Waal. And some of the most popular books on the Benedictine experience today, Dakota and Cloister Walk, were written by the Presbyterian laywoman, poet and author Kathleen Norris. In fact, there are Anglican or Episcopal and Lutheran Benedictine monasteries even in the United States such as St. Gregory's Abbey in Three Rivers, Michigan, and St. Augustine's House in Oxford, Michigan. What is it about Benedictinism, however, that engenders this type of ecumenical spirit in the first place? Collins rightly pointed to the Benedictine focus on hospitality, the reception of guests as Christ's, as messengers of God, Together with that, other monastics explain it this way. Quote, Monasticism is a way of life in which the desire and search for God is all important. Its spirituality is a process of transformation into Christ through self-emptying in order to be totally available to God. As such, it is not necessarily tied to any single belief system. Since it predates the separation of the Christian churches, monasticism forms an ideal basis for ecumenism in today's world. The main forces transcending all our differences are the deep love of God, of sacred scripture, of prayer, of our genuine love and concern for one another. One does not need to be a monk to embrace that. Similarly, in addition to these, the so-called values discerned from Benedict's rule that we discussed earlier, like community, stability, hospitality, attentive listening, obedience, balance, work, Lexio Divina, are themselves ecumenical values. And what is more, the very center of Benedict's rule is Jesus Christ. Prefer nothing 
to the love of Christ. It is this relationship with Christ which grounds community, provides stability and balance, and forms hospitality. And in the rule, as we've seen, this is focused especially in prayer. We believe the divine presence is everywhere. But beyond the least doubt, we should believe this to be especially true when we celebrate the divine office. Drinking deeply from that Benedictine spirituality centered in Christ and the Opus Dei, practitioners of this sort of spirituality are actually formed to be catalysts in the world in seeking and in building greater Christian unity because they have experienced within Benedictinism a unity in Christ that transcends ecclesial boundaries and they refuse therefore to settle for the status quo of a divided Christianity. They function as catalysts simply by living out this Benedictine spirituality, not only in monasteries, but in homes, in work, in parish communities by those who are not monks. If in no other way, they work in building Christian unity by daily prayer for Christian unity as they are united spiritually across all boundaries in the daily prayer of the divine office. Several years ago, the Jesuit theologian Karl Rahner urged theologians and everyone to take more seriously what he called actual faith rather than official faith in the pursuit of Christian unity. At the level of actual faith, Rahner said that their sense of faith, this is Christians in a variety of traditions, but at the level of actual faith, the act of believing, their sense of faith, he wrote, is identical with that of Christians belonging to another denomination. They believe in God. They entrust their lives to this living God of grace and forgiveness. They pray. They are baptized and celebrate the Lord's Supper. They recognize Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen Lord, as the definitive guarantor of God's saving bestowal of himself on them. They live the gospel. They know, too, that to be a Christian in this sense obliges them to participate in a corresponding community of faith, the church." End quote. At the level of actual faith, that is all common. Now, elsewhere, Rahner referred to this unity at the level of actual faith as constituting what he called a third church. That is, not a new denomination separate from the churches and not a super denomination, but a, a community constituting a common Christian ground within the churches seeking and moving toward greater realization in a greater Christian unity, leading ultimately to the reestablishment of full communion. Such an experience of unity is often the experience of those who drink deeply from the wells of Benedictine spirituality, a spirituality that is values-based, finding its center in Christ, a spirituality that is liturgically based, finding its center in the Opus Dei, a spirituality that is listening-based, seeking God and God's word to us in the pages of Scripture, and a spirituality that is ecumenical, open, hospitable to all who wish to enter the school of the Lord's service with no other goal except being lifelong seekers of God and disciples of Benedict. I want to close with a popular Benedictine prayer that one often sees on the back of holy cards of St. Benedict. Let us pray. Raise up, O Lord, in your church the spirit wherewith our Holy Father Benedict the Abbot was animated, that filled with the same spirit we may learn to love what he loved and to practice what he taught. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, and may God bless you.